Hello, Coolman Teacher Nine here. Another review for Rush Hour, the TV series. I've been doing reviews for Rush Hour every episode, so if you want to check out my previous episode reviews, you can check out the last three ones right here. Now, I've been giving some fairly positive reviews the last few episodes, and I have to say, I'm still going to be positive. I've actually come to really enjoy this show. It's not perfect. It still has, still has some issues, and some of the issues from the last episode do persist, as I'll get into detail about. But, the show is starting to do something. It's, it's doing good. I actually really like it. I've actually, I actually look forward to watching the new episode of Rush Hour. Now, the, and I have to start off with the writing. This episode did something different from all the previous episodes. And it did something that has been done but in a better way. I have to say, I didn't like this. This isn't my favorite story. I think I like the whole graffiti artist uh, spotting the murder story better. I, I just enjoyed that one more. But I did like... I have to give a lot of credit for the writing of this episode because it deals a lot with... The episode, the main theme of the episode is dealing with Lee's uh, lack of a feeling at home. In a, being in America, and you know, even a they even I have to give them credit for the metaphor of him trying to find an apartment being you know a metaphor for him trying to find a home. And I was just like, and by the time I finished the episode, I was like, wow, that was that was actually kind of deep. That's actually pretty impressive, to be perfectly honest. The fact that I. I mean, I'm not, I usually don't like metaphors in writing. I think it usually ends up being more of a distraction than anything, but I actually enjoyed that. And of all the pre, of all the episodes of Rush Hour so far, all four of them, this episode actually managed to be shockingly heartfelt. Uh, I've really, so the writing has really made me start to care about these characters, and it's actually come a long way from the pilot going, Oh, Lee, you're one of Carter's closest friends. After knowing him for a few hours, they actually have taken the time to actually give them, give you know, and a lot of the focus is on Lee, given the fact that, you know, he's he's the fish out of water. He's the one who's learning more from, you know, the culture of America. Um, and... You know, having Lee and Carter's interaction, and you know, and you know, this this may not have been the funniest episode, but I actually think it it works things out from a more character driven perspective, and I think that this episode so far was the most character driven out of all of them. This one, like, there's a whole subplot throughout the episode of you know, you know, uh, Carter trying to help Lee find an apartment, and that's. And, you know, and it ties into the actual main plot of the episode, and it actually is, you know, continually referenced and shown. And I actually have to think, I, I, I feel this is the best written episode so far, in terms of characters. I like the plot. I mean, I, 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 don't know. I like the plot with the graffiti artist more. It's a personal thing, but this episode, I think, my, my favorite from a character perspective, it just, it does, it's actually do it's actually developing Lee's characters, developing Carter, uh, Dee Dee, uh, she's, she doesn't have as many appearances as she did in the last episode, but she's actually starting to become more involved in a character sense rather than a work sense, so, I'm actually, I'm actually really excited to see where this goes, because, you know, it's actually building up the theme of family, and it's building up the theme of a home. Of, like, finding a home, even if you are away from home. Even if, you know, you're not, even if he uh, leaves from China on the other side of the world, he's managed to find a family, friends, and a home in America. I'm like, okay, good. I like this. I like it, I like it, I like it. It's character development. I love character development. The actual main plot, I, I would have to say it was, in terms of writing, about the same as the last couple. Uh, it was good. It was, and again, tied, it ended up tying into the theme of family and finding a home. And 
kudos to the writers for that. I actually thought that was good. The humor, I did get a few, um, a few laughs, and, you know, the same as last week, and the same as the week before. I got some laughs out of me, and genuine laughs, and I also, I also noticed that, as far as I can remember, there were no, there were no jokes in this episode that were copying or, you know, cr crimping on a joke from the movies. So, give them credit for that. Uh, they had a few, uh, few race jokes, but they were actually funny. Uh, the whole constantly calling uh, Lee Asian Batman, especially when he, he doesn't catch a guy, and then Carter's just like, you're not Asian Batman. <laughs> it actually, it actually was pretty funny. Um, and especially with Carter's cousin calling Lee Korean. <laughs> you're my favorite Korean detective, Chinese. You know, and I think what's I think what's actually funny about this is this is the kind of thing that happens. This is you know these are the kinds of jokes that you hear that I would hear in real life, and they're pretty funny, honestly. And they're not pressing it over and over and over again. It's not all the humor is. So credit for that. Um, also, in terms of humor, we're actually getting Carter being a bit of a a derp, a kind of incompetent. Like, there's this one part where they're trying to, they see someone, and Lee just jumps off of a second, a second floor balcony, and then, and then Carter's just like, I can do that, and he tries to, like, slowly crawl over it, and he ends up slipping and hanging, just being like, Bleh! And I'll get to this a little bit more, but I actually am enjoying, uh, Justin, oh gosh, Justin, it's Justin Hires or Justin Hines? I'm actually enjoying his performance good, and I'll get to that in a little bit. The action, not as, okay, I have mixed feelings. There were some genuine moments where I was just like, yes, yes, yes. I was cheering because we actually got some, we get unorthodox action scenes. Like there's a, there's a part where, my favorite part, and this is what made me start going, yes. Lee is, you know, he's, you know, he's tailing a guy and the guy goes into this dock. And he gets onto this pole, and he kind of, he crawls under the pole, and then it, it bends over onto the dock, and he just he just drops onto the dock and just continues walking. And it was and it was they didn't make a big deal about it. They didn't overly slow mo it. It was just a casual. He does something completely unorthodox, and I'm like, yes, J the the Jackie Chan style stuff is in this, and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Um, but. When it comes to the other action scenes, the chase scenes, the fight, the slow mo is back, and and it was doing so good until you know he's jumping over a fence or something, and it's like whoosh, slow motion. It's like guys, guys, guys. Ah, oh. honestly, the action would have been fantastic. You know, in you, it just oh that slow mo. It's so distracting. You know, and slow mo, and it's like I understand the temptation to use slow motion. Slow motion looks cool, but overusing it dampens the effect. Constantly having everything a character does slow motion makes it. It slows down the action. Actually, using slow motion multiple times in something that isn't like big, like. I mean, it, it doesn't feel... It takes away from the impact. And I think I said that last time I talked about slow motion. But one thing I have to say is that the movies didn't, you know, use a bunch of slow motion. And, you know, I do think that you should be trying to emulate that kind of action. And which they do in some ways, and in some ways they kind of drop the ball. Overall, it's still good. And in fact, I do believe there was, you know... There was this, you know... The sun scene where, you know, Lee is, you know, they're, they're tussling for, like, a, a bomb detonator. Because that's the whole thing about this episode. There's a, a bomb maker. They're, they're trying to grab it, and it's, like, getting shuffled around. And, you know, I like that. It actually kind of made me think a bit of the, um, the detonator scene in A Rush Hour 2. Which, actually, you know, that probably was, you know, 
it, it's not the same, really, but it's, but, you know, I enjoyed it. The action, I didn't like the actual fight scenes in and of themselves. They were, they were more your standard fare for fight scenes. I didn't like them in the witches the last week, and I still haven't seen a fight scene that I like more than the one where Lee is handcuffed to Carter's cousin, and he's actually using him to fight, which is the most Jackie Chan thing so far. Because, you know, one thing I think this show is missing is the, just the goofy element to the, and the humor to the actual action. Like in Rush Hour 1, where Jet, where Lee uh, grabs that one vase in the, in the display, and he's trying to, he's trying to stop it from falling, and then these guys are, ba are beating up on him, and he's just, and he's fighting them while keeping the vase on his back, ultimately beats them, uh, gets it set up, and then he gets shot, and he's just like, it's it's still missing that action that little bit that little Jackie Chan stuff action but it's getting it has that it has moments where it stuff in like moments in the last episode where Carter or, or Lee just scaled a building just cause just cause he thought something important was up there uh but yeah it was it's good they just really really need to lay out from the slow motion now the acting I've always I've been saying I like Lee, but this is the first episode where uh, Justin Justin Hires I want to call him Justin Hires I think it is, but his Carter this is the most he's been like Chris Tucker in the entire show, and I loved it I loved I loved it This is I mean I think this is the episode that justifies casting him as Carter This really is. Because I had mentioned before that he hadn't been dancing at all. He hadn't been doing any kind of stuff, really. But he finally did that. He does something awesome, and he's just like... Starts dancing in the street. And I'm just like, I was loving it. I'm like, this is this is Carter. This is how Chris Tucker played him. And this is, it was enjoyable. And the fact that he does some... Um, some outrageously, you know, or not outrageous, but some stupid stuff, like I said, climbing on the, trying to slowly climb down the railing that Lee just leaped off of. You know, he does have some awesome moments, because even Carter in the movies, he managed to have some pretty awesome moments, especially in Rush Hour 2. But, um, it was, yeah, it just, it was so enjoyable, because I've been enjoying Lee, I think uh, John Fu's been playing a great Lee, and Justin Hires. Gosh, dang it, I need to look this up. But he, uh... This is the most Chris Tucker he felt, and it was fantastic. And it was, it, it's just, when I saw him start breaking out into a dance, and it, it looked like something Chris Tucker would have done is Lee, and I absolutely love it. I really think at this point that they made good choices. I, I mean, sure, uh, Carter's a little sh on the short side, but the fact that he's acting has, uh, I mean, he's really, really nailed it at this point. And I honestly think, it said they've been growing into the roles, and the writing has actually been allowing them to, you know, act more like their movie counterparts. And I do think that's when it shines, and it really, Carter shown this episode for me, and I had eat some fantastic moments. Overall, this episode isn't my favorite. It's still good, and I actually have to say it's my favorite from a character perspective, especially for Lee. It it really, I mean, it really managed to uh, pull at the heartstrings a little bit, and and they actually are. And I, I said before that it looked like they're hinting that you know there may be a thing with Dee Dee and uh, Lee, and. This episode seems to be going more in that direction, too, and I'm actually excited. I want to see how they write that. Uh, I won't spoil anything, but I really, I'm really looking forward to see how they develop the characters, and I see how they develop the character relationships. Carter's cousin is, of course, back again, and he does help, and he does provide the comic relief, really, and, and it's... The show is kind of coming together. It's it's got it's got some com it's got comedy, it's got action, and it's actually been working thing. And this episode is doing good from a character perspective. It's hard to say if this is an improvement since I do think, feel like the last episode did 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 a few things better. But this is hands down the best episode from a character perspective, 
And yes, if you haven't been watching it and you are a fan of Rush Hour, I would recommend watch. I would at this point start watching Rush Hour. The pilot's not all that great, but the last few episodes have been pretty good. And if you're new to it, I would just recommend watching the movies and then can like Rush Hour one, two, and three, and then starting to watch the show. Especially since the pilot doesn't fill in a whole lot of details and stuff that the movie did. But, yeah. This, I really enjoyed this episode. And another thing, the the season, or season, the episode 5 preview is hinting that Lee's sister is going to be coming back into the fold. So after four, or three episodes of not being involved at all and barely being mentioned, she, they're finally getting back to that, that subplot. I'm really happy. Because I really want a lot, I really want more of this, and I want, I want explanations of motivations, and what's going on, and what's going on behind the scenes, because we know that there's going to be something, but we just haven't really gotten much of a glimpse of that. So, I'm excited, and I'm definitely going to be excited to do my re review of episode 5. Um, as soon as I get it up, I'll be posting episode 5 review right here, but it won't be up until next week. But yes, Rush Hour has uh, continually been, it's been, it's surprised me, really. Uh, it's been a lot better than I thought it would be, because I really thought this was going to be nothing but a cheap cash in, and it was at first, but they're making, they're actually taking the opportunity to make it a decent show. So, yeah, thank you for watching.